Hello everyone, it is Friday, week number three of our Composer Profiles. Today we're going to be talking about the great jazz legend Horace Silver. Let's get started. <music> So to start off, Horace Silver was born on September 2nd, 1928 in Norwalk, Connecticut to a man named John Tavers Silva who had immigrated to the United States from the town of Mayo, Cape Verde. It wasn't until after Horace was born that John decided to change the spelling of their last name from Silva, which was spelled S-I-L-V-A, to Silver, like the color. Now, when Horace was a teenager, he began taking an interest in music. He started playing the tenor saxophone, later switching to the piano, of which his most notable influence was Bud Powell, a really renowned pianist at the time. Now, as Horace progressed musically, he formed his own piano trio, which does not sound like what it is. It is not three pianos. A piano trio is usually a group of three people containing a piano and usually two other types of instruments. Now, since this was a jazz piano trio, it's like additions for the other instruments in addition to the piano were either a bass and drums or a bass and some sort of wind instrument such as a saxophone or a trumpet. Well anyway, in 1950, while Horace's trio was working in Hartford, Connecticut, the group received some attention from the renowned Stan Getz, a really notable saxophonist at the time who had his own band. Now, Stan liked the trio's sound so much that he brought them on tour with him, leading the way for Horace's success as a performer. And it was during this time also that Horace made his recording debut on the 1950 album Stan Gets His Quartet. Now, in 1951, Horace moved to New York, where he worked with the renowned saxophonists such as Lester Young and Coleman Hawkins, as well as many more uh, notable saxophonists at the time. That same year, he met with executives from the record label Blue Note and signed on with them. Now, Horace was known for his contributions to the genre of hard bop. We'll talk more about that shortly. But a 1954 album entitled Horace Silver and the Jazz Messengers was recorded as a milestone in this type of genre and featured Horace's first hit, The Preacher. Now, after 1956, Horace recorded solely with the record label Blue Note that he signed on with in 1951. Now, during his time with Blue Note, Horace created the rhythmically forced branch of jazz known as hard bop. Much of this genre was based on his own writings on blues and gospel, which led the way to his first hit, The Preacher, that I mentioned earlier. Now, what was interesting about Horace's music composition style was it featured a lot of different melodic ideas and a lot of sudden tempo changes, which immediately caught on with the people who listened to it. And Horace's own piano playing easily shifted between these dynamic changes between the tempo and the melodic changes, so he was able to really wrap an audience up in the music as he was playing. Some of his key albums during the 1950s included the Horace Silver Trio from 1953 and Six Pieces of Silver in 1956 and Blowing That Blues Away from 1959. Now in 1963, Horace formed a new trio which helped him create his next album, Song for My Father, which hit number 95 on the Billboard 200 in 1965. And throughout the 1960s and 1970s, Horace's music would reflect the changing times in the world, usually through spirited vocal tracks in the music. Now in 1980, after completing more than 20 records with the label Blue Note, Horace left his position there but continued to compose vitally important music, such as his 1985 album, Continuity of the Spirit. One of his last albums, It's Gotta Be Funky, was released in 1993. In 2005, Horace was given the President's Merit Award at the National Academy of Record Artists and Sciences. Later in 2007, his autobiography, Let's Get to the Nitty Gritty, an autobiography by Horace Silver, was published by University of California Press. Horace Silver died of natural causes on June 18, 2014, at the age of 85, in his home in New Rochelle, New York. And to this day, he is still considered to be one of the icons of American jazz music. Thank you all for watching this. This was a little bit shorter one, I think, from the last two. More recent, which I think will uh, bring in more people because, you know, composers don't just die. Compo there's composers, well-known composers, living on throughout today. So I feel it is important to get to know those composers as well as the ones who made us and put us where we are today. That's all for here. Have a wonderful weekend, a great 4th of July. Happy birthday, America. Take care. I will see you all on Monday.